is going on guys? We are starting off the video with the 2020 GT500 build. If you are not familiar, we are doing this for a customer. We went and picked it up, brought it back here. <laughs> Got all the parts ordered. I went ahead and spec this build to hopefully go mid to low nines, make somewhere around 1,000 to 1,100 wheel horsepower. And this is the build process that we documented. We didn't film all the install stuff, but I'm gonna give you a quick rundown on the parts used. I will have a link in the description to each part that we used or contact info to get that part. We do sell some of the stuff on mustanglifestyle.net as well. So Let's go ahead and start it off. So obviously it's a 2020 GT500. This car had about 700 miles on it. We went right to adding some mods to it. We started starting off with the intake. We did a 1320 Junkie a WD152. Uh, that is a larger cold air. You pick up some power with that, helps flow some air. We got a PBD 105 millimeter throttle body. We have a PBD billet lid. We have a Whipple intercooler, Whipple water manifold. We have a 1320 Junkie ported blower. We also did the VMP 20% overdrive kit. Uh, that comes with the ATI 20% lower, uh, their tensioner, and their secondary belt tensioner that moves it out of the way. We also went with a set of stainless works, inch and seven eighths inch headers on this car, going to a Borla Attack three inch catback all the way through that does keep the active catback also in check. Now for fuel, we did not want to have any issues with fuel. We went right to ID1700X injectors and we also did the lethal triple pump fuel system to give us plenty of fuel flow for our needs. We also did a set of Bogart D10 wheels. I will have contact information down in the description if you want to hit up Nate, tell Mustang Lifestyle sent you, the promo code Mustang Lifestyle. These wheels look awesome and you guys will see that in this video here. Overall, these parts and wheels and tires and everything is not cheap, but this is building an awesome car. And uh, as you can see, we bolted on some parts, made over a thousand wheel horsepower and went right to the track and went mid nines. Let's go ahead and jump in the video. Before we get too far, I just want to mention that we are giving away our Whipple S550. There is not a lot of time left on this giveaway. Just starting today, we're going to do 10 times entries on sticker orders. This is going to end on the 30th. So any sticker order that you go ahead and purchase, we're going to do 10 times entries until the 30th. So definitely go down in the description. That will get you 10 times the entries um, for purchasing a sticker. We have a lot of different uh, stickers in stock ready to go. You can also pick up a hoodie, t-shirt, and various other items. The drag racing t-shirts are also five bonus entries still um, because the pre-order is just about up. We're about to start shipping those here in about a week. So let's hop into the build process. What is going on guys? We are starting off the video here with the 2020 GT500. We just got the blower back from Jason Textera at 1320 Junkie. It is right here, ported and ready to go. Uh, we're gonna be assembling this and uh, probably working on a few other things today. We still got the ATI lower to do. We also have to finish up the headers and cat back and the fuel system. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, so here is the blower ported by Jason. Looks awesome. Uh, we got the inlet, the area that goes into the rotors. Don't know what that's called. Uh, the bearing plate looks awesome, and then we have the runners also ported. So I am very excited to get this together and get it back in the car. We should be able to make some serious power with this. We did decide to go with the PBD lid, but it is not in stock yet. But we do have the Whipple intercooler to go in and the PBD 105 millimeter throttle body. All right, so I got the blower fully assembled uh, minus the pulley drive. We're just waiting for the pulley and hub and tool to come in so that we can do that. Technically, we could put the stock pulley on, but I really don't want to pull things twice. So hopefully that'll come in uh, very soon and then we can put the blower all together. All right, Mr. Cody, fuel system install time. I'm gonna pull the stock hat out and get the new fuel system ready to put in the car. All right, so we just got the Bogarts mounted. These are the wheels we're gonna be running on the 2020. They look awesome. Beadlock 18 by 11 rear, 20 by five front. Nikki Thompson up front. Nikki Thompson, ET Street R in the rear. We're getting these mounted. So we just got the fronts mounted right there. You don't need a tire machine for beadlocks, but it does make it a little bit easier to push it down. So we're over at AJ's tires. 
in Orange City. Chris is uh, going to be helping with the 2020 GT500 today. But we're also going to mount the wheels and tires on it. And like that. So we might have to come over here. They have an alignment machine. They'll do low cars, which is always a struggle to find someone who will deal with low cars and mounting race wheels like these. So we got the tires mounted. So I'll we'll have to see what they look on the car. Look like on the car. What's up, bud? I can see the lens moving. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's looking pretty solid. What's that? So clearing the brake? Yep. Yes, we are. So we have to install uh, aftermarket vertical links on this car to clear the 18-inch uh, the wheels that were going on it. The factory ones, when they're installed, they actually hang a little bit lower than the rotor. So with the new ones, let me grab them right over here. With the new links, they're offset just a little bit. It gives us more clearance for the wheel. So the wheel should go on without any issues with clearance whatsoever. Sweet. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Easy as that. Here's some. So yeah, definitely a lot shorter. Oh, wow, yeah. Cool. That is straight fire. They fit? Not hitting anything? No, it clears it perfect. Yeah. Damn. That is, that's wild. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to get some, some outside shots of this thing. Front of 20s? Yeah, 20 by five, 18 by 11 rear. All right, so it's been a little bit since I showed the 2020 on camera, but it looks phenomenal on the Bogart wheels. Uh, we are gonna cut to a montage of clips right here uh, showing off these wheels and let's do it. Here she is. She is looking good, ready to hit the dyno tomorrow morning. You guys are gonna see that clip next. Hopefully lay down some power. Pretty much got everything finished up. We got the billet lid, ported blower, cold air intake. Yeah, we'll go over a little bit more tomorrow. Didn't film this car quite in detail, but you guys will get to see the final result and I think it looks awesome. Comment down below if you think I should get a set of Bogarts for the GT350R. I think it looks awesome. Now, if you guys wanna pick a set of these up, I'll have some info in the description. Um, Nate, the guy at Bogart, call him or email him and just tell him Mustang Lifestyle sent you. Uh, you can get these exact specs for your 2020 GT500 or GT350, 350R. These would work uh, exactly for those. So 20 by five front skinny. They can also do a wider front wheel if you don't want a skinny. And then these are 18 by 11s. Uh, you can go for a bigger wheel in the rear as well if you want to do that but I think it looks awesome. I think this car looks absolutely stunning. I think a set of these wheels for the 350R 
would look good. Now you could do a 20 inch in the rear. Uh, that would also look really good too. Defeats the purpose of having a drag pack, but uh, overall, I mean, I think this looks awesome. I think if I did it on the 350R, I probably wouldn't go as much of a skinny up front. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, mostly just want a street drag pack or street drag setup. And then the carbon fiber wheels would be for the road course stuff. All right, so we headed over to Real Street to go ahead and get the car on the dyno. We were going to go down to Palm Beach Dyno and get it on their dyno, but we just had a scheduling and we couldn't make a lineup since we just got back from Texas. I have Texas 2K footage coming soon. Real Street is super close, and we did some remote tuning with Palm Beach Dyno. They had the 93 and E85 base file already in the car ready to go. So we hopped on the dyno with Real Street and we made some power. So let's go roll over to that. We did uh, those pulls on pump E85, and now we're turning it up pretty good. So that was actually a 3.2 upper um, with the 20% lower, so only about 15 pounds of boost. We're loading in a 2.6. Uh, we had to change the belt, but should be adding, adding about seven pounds of boost. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and put some one ethanol R in it. And one, it's a safety net. Two, probably make a little bit more power with it. Um, really good stuff. And Real Street actually stocks it here too, so that made things really easy. So let's go ahead and add this into the tank. And then should be good to make at least four digits. All right, let's see. So we got the belt and pulley and everything swapped. We made about 994 on that last pull. Uh, we're thinking we're still getting a little bit of belt slip. The belt might be breaking in because it did get a little bit tighter after those pulls. Uh, we pulled the plug, checked the strap, see how it looks. It looks good. We're loading a new tune in and we're gonna put this back in and make another hit. See what happens.
might still be just getting that bell slip up top too. Yeah. Not bad though. I think that's pretty good. A very solid car. Yeah. I think it looks good. All right. All done with the dyno. Huge thanks to the guys at Real Street. We're gonna go ahead and get the car loaded. We're gonna swap the wheels, and I think I might put the tower brace on. You saw that I had to hold the hood up uh, with the wood. That's just because we wanted to have access to the spark plugs. But overall, she's running great. We made multiple thousand wheel horsepower dyno poles, so I think we are more than good to ship her right to the track. Okay, right, so you saw that we made some pretty good power. I didn't film pretty much everything, but we did have to swap a belt midway through the process, um, going from the 3.2 to a 2.6 pulley. I did think that I had a 3.0 pulley on it, but it was a 3.2, um, so there was just a little bit less boost. We went to a 2.6 pulley. It does appear, looking at the data log, we were hit, hitting a little bit of belt slip, so there is an upgrade that I do have coming uh, in the future, not for this video, but for the next stage of this build. We're gonna do an SP auxiliary idler to hopefully give just a little bit more belt wrap and get rid of that little belt slip that we're seeing at the upper rpm range because we're seeing right about 21.9 pounds on the hit and we're only seeing about 18 19 up top so we definitely want to hold that 22 pounds all the way through the pole and uh, we should see some significant horsepower gains now on the 3-2 20% lower which is pretty low boost it's about 15 pounds of boost we hit right about 900 wheel horsepower absolutely awesome and then we went right to the 2.6 20% lower um, like I said uh, we are experiencing some belt slip it is a much smaller pulley but it is looking pretty good and uh, we did run the hood down uh, for most of those runs but lifting it up did seem to pick up uh, a little bit over 10 horsepower the reason why we did that is because we wanted to keep the brace off of the car uh, so if I needed to go ahead and get access to the spark plugs we didn't have to worry about pulling the brakes the brace does block access to pretty much all the back side of the spark plugs uh, luckily we didn't have to I just pulled one plug uh, which could probably be done with the brace um, just to check it out but we are good to go ready for the dyno huge thanks to real street rob the tune maker shoemaker palm beach dyno and let's go head over to the track uh, the owner of the car is going to be driving it and uh, we'll see how it goes <laughs> I mean, it went A to B. Seven at one forty five. I think he needs to send it at 3200. 9.6. 9.6, dude. That's it. 147. 1660 foot. Chopping her down. Awesome. 9.6 at 147.
I don't know. Go up in RPM and it bogs. It's weird. Is that still 3200? 148, yeah. Damn. Yes! That's what I like. Awesome. Hold on that. GT500 just did this. Another hot lap. Let's see what happens. Consistent. Jesus, 965, 1622. Just need to get a 1.4 out Another nine five. Oh, we got nine five. There we go. It went one five. Did it do it? Went one five seven. He did a little bit of a better burnout there. Nice. We're right there, dude. Dude, it only went one fourteen in the eighth on that one. Yeah, it does. That thing's awesome. <laughs> Getting there. there we go. Yeah, you got weight and you made like 40 passes, so I think yeah. that pretty much ain't nobody beat that time. You, you Nine six, one forty-seven. It's hot, but yeah, yeah, you lost mile power. Like eight miles. One five again though. It did. Yeah. Just heat soak. Yeah, we'll let her cool down. Right. How's it feel on the big end though? Feels good. Feels good. Feels strong. Hell yeah. Alright, 
right, so we are wrapped up. If you guys are interested in doing something like this, uh, this package uh, with me, I will leave my contact information down below. Uh, just contact me with about your 2020 GT500. Let me know what your goals are and we can definitely put something together for you. I will also have the parts linked down in the description uh, to go ahead and pick it up. But this is amazing. I mean, bolt-ons on these cars and we are going mid nines and we have a lot of room for improvement. On the next package that I do, I will recommend that auxiliary idler, assuming the testing on it goes very well. Palm Beach Dino, as always for the tuning, they tune these cars really, really well. And um, they've done most of the 2020 GT500s and they have tuned some fast ones. We were having some issues with uh, getting the 60 foot down we were just kind of tweaking the track was really really sticky uh, we did end up seeing a best of a 1.5 60 foot but we were looking for something like a 1.4 60 foot it's about where we've seen some other cars the DA was terrible 2000 DA we're seeing about a 148 trap we did tr see a 120 trap in the eighth on one of the passes which is awesome um, but this car was hot lapped over and over and over again and um, it's impressive I mean it went a 9-6 like six or seven times and back to back to back you know probably three in a row nine six passes a best of nine five that day um, if we could get some better weather I don't know if we will because it is getting hotter in Florida but if we get some better weather fix up our boost issues and we should be easily going into the bottom nine. So I'm hoping for that and hope you guys are excited for that. Um, anyways, make sure you slap the like button down below, leave a comment, let us know what you think and go enter for the Whipple S550 giveaway. It ends soon and we'll see you guys in the next one.